Henry's on his way and keeping it in gray. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, The Reign of Superman, McFarlane Platinum Edition, Steel. During one fateful day at a construction site, Superman saved former engineer John Henry Iron's life. Following Superman's deadly battle with Doomsday, Irons took up the mantle to protect Metropolis using his technical expertise. Irons constructed a power armor suit, adorned with the iconic S-Shield as a tribute. John Henry's armor granted him super strength in flight. Irons also developed a weaponized self-propelled hammer in honor of John Henry's American folk hero namesake. After Superman's return, Irons continued his work on two fronts, aiding the world through technology and his company Steelworks, and protecting the skies of Metropolis as steel. Just before we look at the Savior with a sledgehammer, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the Platinum Edition version of Steel is. Now, we've already granted a look at the original version of Steel. I'll bring him in, in a second so you can see the comparisons between the two. Using the same mold, yes, but cosmetically, at least, they've changed out some of the things on him. Notably, one of the things that may turn people off is the fact that this guy's not sporting a red cape. I kind of feel in the same way, but I like the colors of the majority of the figure's body. While I'm doing this also as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the Platinum Edition Steel that we could have a look in this review. The figure, though, like the one before, stands exactly 7 inches in height, or the figure is 18 centimeters tall. The other Henry may not have been platinum, no, but at least that figure did have a red cape, bringing the original released regular version of Steel... One thing that you can see is while they are using the same bodies. I did, though, like the blue tint that they did to the plastic. But what I didn't like, though, was the little flecks and fibers of blue that was mixed in with the plastic. I wish there was another way that they could have just tinted the plastic without adding all these little fibrous details to it. Because it's everywhere. It's from the top of his head all the way down to the bottom of his boots. This one also, the Platinum Edition, does have the little flex, but not to the degree of this one. This one approaches the color of the character a little bit darker, a much more darker gray, and he has better detail, I feel, on the figure's face. So if you have that other steel, you'll find that all the same accessories are shared. The figure, first of all, comes include with the same display stand. Not that I'm going to bring in the other one, because you already know what a DC logo stand looks like by now. A DC logo printed down below, and of course, one peg to the side that can plug into one of the figure's feet. I always do really readily use these. I mean, especially when it comes to a character with big clunky boots like steel. I'm not a big fan of his feet. That was something I did mention with the original version of steel. I'll probably talk again when we look at this version. The figure also comes include what seems to be the exact same trading card. I'm going to bring in the original one that, that obviously you can see between the two. If anything, I could say maybe the font on steel and the wording below it is a little bit darker in coloring. But other than that, it does look to be the exact same card. If you flip it around to the back, the read-up is also exactly the same. So they haven't done anything different. I mean, obviously, if this is just going to be a variation of the original release, I can't expect them to give us a brand new card. The card that we had was fine. Getting it again doesn't bother me at all. Gonna move that to the side. The figure also comes included again a warped hammer. Not as warped as the original one. This was actually a little bit more warped on the end. Bring in the original hammer, you can see it's warped all from I still have not yet heated this. I gotta get around to doing that. It's the exact same hammer uh, from top of the head all the way down to the bottom of the handle. And again, this one doesn't have this one, it would have had like the actual figure, all these little flecks of blue. See how it's everywhere? I mean, I don't mind the color. If the color was just this without all the little fibers of blue around it. I'd be fine with that. Unfortunately, though, like I said, it's just all these little flecks that you find everywhere. The original hammer, or the one that we get with the Platinum Edition, doesn't have any of that. It's a little on the more blander side. I would prefer, if anything, the, the regular released hammer, just without all the... Can I have both? Apparently, I can't have both. Just without it, just with some of it gone, I think I would have been happier with all that. But it's the exact same hammer. It wields in his hand the exact same way. The thing about the plastic, though, is once again, it's very hard plastic. So you may have wanted to take some precautionary steps to heat the hand first in hot water, or you can also use yourself a hairdryer. I have done one of them. I used a, a hairdryer, but unfortunately, the plastic is cold a little bit, but he does wield it. I still wish, though, that the figure could have come included with a swappable hand. I did say this with the original steel. It still carries over my opinion with this one. He needed to have two gripping hands. So again, he could have actually wielded a hammer on both sides. Now, you could sort of phone it in by having him just sort of cupping the hammer that way. And that doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad at all. But I wish he could have also had himself a gripping hand so he could actually have wielded the hammer with both hands instead of just the one. Taking the hammer and just moving off to the side. Uh, getting out of his hand. There we go. Getting a closer look at Steel, I'll tell you right away, the one thing I like about the Platinum Edition that I feel the first one didn't do a good enough job of doing was actually coloring some of the details around his eyes. The eyes pop a lot more, as well as could be said for his lips. 
Now, you could say, like, with, if he's wearing, like, a steel suit, for example, would his eyes stand out that much? Well, I, I feel like there would still be an opportunity to add some darker colors. The original one didn't only, well, it only had just the white eyes alone. I feel like the colors of the lips and the coloring around the eyes is just enough to make the head sculpt pop better on this one than this one here. The bodies are exactly the same. The S, I will say, is cleaner on this one. It came across a little chalky and pasty on the first steel release. So again, like the colors are a little bit better handled here. Now, if you like a little bit of breakup of color, whereas this one really used all that kind of bluish gray from head to toe, this one at least brings in some matte gray that he has in his shoulders, the gauntlets, the lower trunks, and the lower boots down below here. Uh, there's still, of course, I feel an opportunity where they could have gone in there and added a wash to this because it's just all this single coat coat or maybe a couple of coats of just this medium gray. It really needed something just to add a little bit more to it. I don't want it necessarily to the point where it looks comes across a little pasty and muddy like this shield, but just if they had added a little wash to this because I feel like it's only really just two colors at play here. Ironically enough, though, the color inside his emblem is a different color than the plastic around it. I don't know why they wouldn't have just colored it in the same, unless they had to, of course, try to match the colors of the molded plastic, and it just didn't quite cut it, didn't quite match up completely. Uh, the cape is probably one of the big things that may turn people off of this suit, is the fact that the original steel, the regular release steel, does have a red cape. The newer steel, while still using the same mold, unfortunately uses, though, again, this gray plastic. I'm almost even tempted to see if I can try to pry this off. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where I almost feel like I want to Frankenstein the figure. There's Again, I like the blue elements of it. I just don't know if I like as much the, the fact that it's got these blue flecks everywhere. I'm almost, again, tempted if I can try to peel the cape off. The cape is plugged on the back of the figure's body, and it's also attached right here. I mean, I'm sure I would just destroy the figure if I was trying to remove this, but at least it's separate from the rest of his shoulders. If you were to say remove this, I wonder if you could swap the cape out with the original one that we got. Because, again, I, I feel like that might just be enough to make this the better of the two steels, even though I do like the blue better on this one than the darker gray that they do for here. Now, for the figure's articulation, it's going to be the exact same as the other uh, steel. So, of course, his head's going to rotate all the way around. It looks up, down, back, and forth. So, all the stuff that goes along with it being on a ball joint. The shoulders come out easily, not hindered at all by the fact he does have the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads actually attach up here rather than here. So, bringing out the arms is not a problem at all. You can move them not all the way around. I mean, they're going to get a little more hung up, but I guess they do still rec technically rotate. The figure does have a bicep swivel. Double hinge on the elbow, the hands do rotate all the way around. Upper torso ball joint, lower abdomen ball joint. Once again, the legs are splitting out on ratcheted joints on the insides of the thighs. You take the legs and move forward, move them back. Moving them forward, though, you can only go so far. Moving them back, about the same. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. And no articulation, once again, for these clunky boots. This is, again, the one thing I really don't like about the figure. It caused me at least so many more problems because once the toes start getting really overly loose, it almost feels like he's just walking around in big giant, almost walking in shoe boxes if you ever did that as a kid. But he looks like he's got these big giant boot, almost Robocop feet. The same thing, the same problem is also here as well for this version of Steel. He just has these big, large shoes. I just wish, if anything, give him the hinge here for the ankle. I'm not complaining about that. I would almost have been fine if they had just done away with this being a hinge joint here at all. I mean, just made this as one solid foot and not have any articulation. That's just me. But all in all, it's a good-looking Steel. If some people probably would have said, hey, you know, of the two... I would have preferred really the one with the red cape, and I get that. I like the colors of the blue on the regular release of Steel. I like the red cape more on the regular release of Steel. But what unfortunately I don't like is what went along with the idea of tinting the plastic blue. Adding blue to silver it would seem like it would have been an easier thing to do. Unfortunately, though, what it ended up doing was adding all again, like these little markings, these little blue fibrous parts all over the plastic. I don't like that as much. I feel like, honestly, the face is a little bit better on the regular release or the Platinum Edition release. I feel like the colors are a little bit nicer handled. And again, like if you like the little more breakup of color, instead of just being this bluish silver all the way down from head to toe, this one at least breaks it up a little bit by adding some nice lighter grays. The grays, admittingly, don't have any wash them so there probably could have been an opportunity to adding some additional paint but i feel like i almost wish i could have taken some elements from both of these figures mushed them together and through having both figures come up with what i feel to be then a perfect steel i don't think either one of them is giving us a perfect steel there's elements that i like from each one of them 
The accessory count also for this steel is quite low. To be fair as well, the original steel also only had just the hammer, just the display stand, and just also as well the trading card. But I do wish still that they could have incorporated a secondary hand. Just one at least that you can actually have him wielding the hammer with both his hands. But at least you can, I guess, cup the hammer in one hand, as I'm currently kind of doing here in Final Looks. This figure is good. I don't know if I would say... I'm still torn as to which steel I actually like more. The color, I think, is approached better on this one. This one comes across cleaner, but he doesn't have like the notable colors that I would want to have had with a steel. Notably, like the red cape, for example. The bluer works also, I feel, on the other steel better, but unfortunately, with the trade-off of that, it means you have to get all these extra little flecks that they've added to the plastic. I wish that they could have almost even keep the color more consistent with this gray, and if anything, just tinted it slightly only with blue. The flecks are still there on this one, but it's not again to the level of what we got with the original steel. Which of the two steels do you think is a better looking figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. It may be also one of those torn questions because you probably like some elements of this steel, and you might like other elements of the other steel. You kind of wish, you, like myself, you probably could have made a steel out of both of them. But again, which one do you think is the better looking steel? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, hey, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly would like to stick around for more, I will tell you in the meantime, popping up at the very end of this video will be a playlist for other DC Multiverse reviews. That could tie you over in the meantime, but I will also tell you that there's going to be more DC Multiverse reviews in the pipeline. So making sure you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.